Well, those singles that you put out, they they made some noise and they did well. And then the message came around. Right. Now, up until that point, hip hop was really just all party records, right? Exactly. Party records, you know, hip hop 101, writing rhymes about writing rhymes, you know? It was <laughs> you know, the good old days. Right. It was it was call and response. Yeah. It was it braggadocio. braggadocio. It was how much money and jewelry I got, right. you know, how many cars, how many ladies I got. Right. You know, I'm partying, I'm having a good time. And then out of the blue, you know, comes this song right in the middle of Reaganomics. And, you know, around that time, cracks start hitting New York. It was around, yeah, that's when it, it actually, yeah, that was, that was when it first started, around 80, 81, 82. Right. And then the song comes out that was completely different than anything that, that anyone's ever heard before. And it was you and Duke Booty, right? right. Well, the, the song was produced by Jigs Chase, Sylvia Robinson. And Duke Booty played on the song, but I don't say I wouldn't say he necessarily produced it. But it was because see the whole the whole thing with the message is nobody believed in the in, in that song except for Sylvia Robinson. It was her whole it just like probably nobody believed in Rappers Delight except for Sylvia Robinson. But uh, Duke Booty had wrote two songs. One song was called Dumb Love. And the other song was the message, broken glass everywhere. People, but the the, the the lyrics to Dumb Love was, you know, I seen a dancing on Soul Train. Everybody seen a face, don't nobody know a name, and it, it was just Dumb Love. That was a dumb. It was just like a repetitive hook. He liked Dumb Love. I didn't think too much about either of the songs either way. But uh, Sylvia was so. You know, she was just so fixated on doing that song, and she told uh, uh, his name is Ed, Ed Fletcher, Duke Booth. She told him, "You will put out Dumb Love on you, but I want I want to uh, do the message for one of the groups." Now we had a song out at that time, so Sugar Hill Gang was supposed to do the message, but they didn't like the song. So no, so she had a song that basically nobody wanted to do. So. Uh, I did the song because, like I said, she was so fixated on doing the song that I knew the song was going to get done anyway. So it might as well just go for the ride and, you know, and do the song. So they they went in the studio, her and Jigs put the track together, you know, uh, do booty play percussion. It took three days to mix the song. She didn't want nobody to touch the board. She would tape it until she got it exactly right. And when she put it out, like I said, I didn't think the record was going to do anything. Cause it, it it didn't it it didn't um it, it 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 didn't resonate nothing that was going on in in the basic hip hop world. It wasn't a hip hop song. It wasn't. It didn't have no beats in it. You couldn't break dance to it. But it resonated in the general public, basically. That you know, don't push me close closer there. I'm trying not to lose my head. That could be anybody. That could be you know, and that and that and that song was like a song like uh. People that didn't like hip hop, that wish hip hop would go away. That was the first song that made the average person that wasn't a hip hop person like hip hop. Yeah, I mean the the poetry and storytelling of that last verse. Yeah, you know, a child is born with no state of mind, blind to the ways of mankind. Got a smiling on you, but he's frowning too because only God knows what she'll go through. Yeah, but I, then, that, that's basically the story of uh, you know. Every kid that ever grew up in the hood—that's that's the that's the story. I mean, well, on the on the yeah, bad end. And then, you know, by the end of the verse, the kid ends up going to prison and then getting raped in prison and ultimately committing suicide by hanging himself. Right. At the end, and it's just like wow, just the the imagery of it was was really like nothing you've ever heard before in in music. Period. Right. But, but there, and that's just trying to you know. That's Sylvia Robinson trying to just uh, well she she if, if you could say anything you want to say about it she's she's a great producer she 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 produced the two pivotal records that helped change hip hop and basically helped change music and uh and and my verse that was just me like I always try to write different I never if I see if, and I, and I I, t I tell I tell people uh, to this day if you see a bunch of niggas doing something 
do something else. That's what's going to work. You have a better chance of, of you know, because there's less, it's less competition over here than over there. You know what I'm saying? So, and 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 that and that's what the child is born was. And and actually, I got the uh, the concept for the song from Living for the City, Stevie Wonder. A boy huh. is born in Hard Time, Mississippi. That's how he opened his, and I opened my verse up. A child is born with no state of mind. So, and that's that was that was where you know the uh, the inspiration for that for that verse. Oh, wow, I just learned something today. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you didn't think the song was going to do anything, but the song comes out and it goes platinum in less than a month. Yeah. Uh, this is the first time you've had anywhere near that type of success. Right, because it, it went to another it went to another level. It's like uh and even even to this day, you know, m- most hip hop is like uh it's like I call it niggerachi. I mean, even though white people listen to a lot of it, but it's more it's more, you know, uh, it comes from a, a urban place, you know, it's like street. It's more street. Now, the message was actually a street record, but it, like I said, it, it resonates amongst anybody. And then, and then, uh, 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 it gave us like a, a a pop audience, and then it gave us like a rock and roll audience. So, you know, we started hanging out downtown, and um. And I, you know, we was trying to be stars. Like we wasn't trying to be necessarily street. I was trying to be, you know, I wanted to be a rock star. I seen Billy Idol and he was, you know, doped up on one side of the bar. I wanted to be coked up on the other end of the bar, like downtown and, you know, amongst all the people that was down there. I wanted to be, you know, a rock star. We, and we did it. You know, we, we, we did what we, you know, paid the price, but we did it. Well, I mean, this is the first hip hop record that was added to the, United States National Archive of Historic Recordings. Uh, first hip hop record to be inducted into the Grammy Hall of Fame. Right. Uh, just a big impact. And then later on, Ice Cube ended up sampling the record for the Check Yourself remix. Right. Uh, did you like that version, by the way? I thought it was. I thought it was okay. I mean, you know, I was never a big Daz Effects fan, but I thought it was. I thought it was okay. I mean, you know, you know, somebody else's version of. It, it, it's almost like it's like they pay, you know, they paying homage, you know, because they just did it just like when Puffy did it. They just did, you know, a tricked out version of it. You know, the only the only thing that I would say is that, you know, if we, if we could have got a verse on it, you know, just to make it, you know, just to make it honest. But, you know, I mean, people do what they do. They just did it. You know, they did their version of what of, of our song. And it was a nice little check in it. So that never hurt. Right, I forgot. Yeah, Puffy, Puffy featuring Mace. Uh, Can't nobody hold me down. Sampled right. the message as well. Okay, right. And then I mean, Snoop ended up quoting the song uh, for uh, America's two two of America's most wanted. Uh, I keep my hand on my gun because they got me on the run. Right, right. And then uh, Spice One, you know, Jealous got me strapped with Tupac said the same thing on his on his chorus. I keep my hand on my gun because they got me on the run. So like the, the effects of the song just kept hitting music over and over again, decade after decade. Right. You know, because everyone who who basically, everyone was, was a fan of the song originally, I'm sure. So, yeah, yeah. But, but, and, but even still to this day, that's the most important. And it, it, it and it's definitely was a couple of important songs in hip hop, but that is the single most important song in hip hop. Not, you know, in, in, in you know, people would have to understand the, the true meaning of the word important. You know what I mean? Any You could say anything is important, you know, but it's up to you by discretion. But that was definitely the song that made it. That was when hip hop actually grew up. Hip hop was a man then. You know, before yeah. it was just a bunch of little kids. We running around. We b-boying. You know, they spray putting spray paint on everything. After the message, it was real. It's like it's now this is art. Now this is, you know, in the Library of Congress, you know, it's a, uh, it's a, uh, you know, it's it's a man now. Hip hop is a grown man after that. I agree. I completely agree. 